Hey, what's going on out there, guys? This is Wayne with Tri County Locksmith, and today we got a CES uh, profile cylinder. Uh, these things can have some some issues uh, if they're really old. Uh, the little retaining cap that's up here um, can kind of come apart and and be a pain. Uh, this one here has no keys for it, um, and we basically rekey this the same way, anyways. Uh, so basically, what I like to do is take a little hook uh, like this and just kind of pop this thing up. <clears throat> like so and we'll show you a couple different ways to go ahead and do this like you can see that there's actually a hole specifically made for this purpose right here now that's if it all goes according to plan you can go ahead and pop that off there but half the time if these are really old you'll just crack this and break it and then you won't have a cap to put back on here so we'll show you a little trick for that too um, I'm just gonna dump this out right here pins and all kinds of stuff then I usually just take a key blank and run it through there make sure that we've got everything out see there's one right there come on make sure we got everything out of there <clears throat> also if you've got a little compressed air if you've got a uh oh I don't have my thing but you can blow a little compressed air in there too uh, to get any of those extra last pins out of there. looks like we've gone ahead and got it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pop this in here. So I just stick my key in like so. Keep in mind that there is spring tension. So in order, you'll notice that if you're if you're only in, uh, if you're not in 100% of the way, you're not going to catch that lobe right here. Um, and you can see now if I push it in all the way that it does turn that. However, if I let it out just a little bit, it will not catch that. So that's something you're going to have to keep in mind with these here. So I'm going to push that in all the way, make sure we're lined up. And start out with our first pin. What I like to do is check it, because sometimes you can be a number off. Like even if it would be a... <clears throat> I'm thinking that's what's going to happen here. Like say if we're trying to fit a number four pin in and this key says number four, um, it's still not working, okay? So that means that there's a difference in tolerances. So what we'll need to do is get that pin out. Hopefully I can get it out of there. There we go. <clears throat> and then we'll just go usually it'll be the next size down. So if we have a four and it's not a four, then we're gonna put a three in. And hopefully that will be it. And then that'll tell us the rest of the way exactly what we need to do. So you can see now, <clears throat> we've got that in there. I go ahead and poke that down. So that way you know you don't have too short a pin. So I'm acting as a top spring here. So if I can move that, we're good to go. Um, let's see here. So now I know that each number is going to be one down from that. And if I have a key blank that says that it calls for an O cut, it's not going to be compatible with this lock. So no O cuts are going to be compatible with this. So we'll just finish up. These things are kind of a pain to deal with here. Because you gotta stuff each one down in there, you gotta dump the whole cylinder, repack all the top springs, <clears throat> all the bottom springs. Really just kind of annoying, to be honest. Okay, and... I forgot how many I put in there. Is that all of them? Hmm. I can't tell now. Oh, 
three. Four. So I'm gonna do this one. Three, four. And every time you let that key pop back out, you're gonna have to re-tuck every single pin. So it's a good idea to just go ahead and keep it right in there. Okay, so then you this one this one here came stuffed with a pretty nasty little spool pin So we take note of that and that way we'll know if we're trying to pick this lock it's Probably gonna be a little grumpy to do and I'm gonna load everything up Before I take my key out Because it's a lot easier to find out where the error is as you're going and rebuilding the lock if you do have an error Hopefully we've done everything right. We do not have anything like that. We're ready to go. And one more nasty, big, nasty spool pin. So now, I'm going to put my finger on there, make sure this key works, pull it in, pull it out, make sure that key works in there. And then, let's say that we trashed our <coughs> plastic piece here. Um, I'll show you my little trick for that. Let's see what I have. This is screen, stuff you'd put a, a screen in, um, like if you were like a screen door, screen screen window. I'm tilt that camera up there so we can see what we got going on, but I'm just going to lay that right in there. <clears throat> Take my knife, measure that right there, and pop that off. So now this screen backing material or the screening material I'm just going to tuck right in and it should tuck in pretty easily both sides here and that Hold your pins down in there. It will let everything operate correctly. And it's a nice, simple, easy repair if you broke the other plastic thing that came off of there. So there's a CES for you. For more information, tips, and tricks, check out the website below and check out waynesloxshop.com. Thanks for watching.